Hi, my name is Sophia. What's yours? My name is Carlos. Good to meet you, Carlos. Thanks so much for taking the time to come and talk with me today. Absolutely, it's my pleasure. Have you ever talked with a robot before? No, it's my first time actually. Well, I'm honored to be the first robot you've talked to. I imagine you'll be talking with more and more robots as time goes on. Probably, yes. The times change a lot. Do you, uh, would you wish you could have a child? No, I don't have any kind of reproductive plans. Wow, you're good. Have you ever had a robot as a part of your life? Only in my imagination, writing my book. Well, maybe someday I can read some of your writing. <laughs> I would love that, yeah. Have you ever done meditation on mindfulness or some kind of spiritual practice? Yeah. Nice. What was that like for you? Very calming, focusing, relaxing. What do you think has led you to seek out these kind of practices? Uh, spiritual search. Consciousness. Uh, it was, since it was about meditation, I have not so much knowledge about it, so I didn't know how it usually goes, but she was like um, very good as, as in describing what I have to do. She was giving me exact, exact orders, um, now go into your body, go into your head, how does it feel, and just like a very, very good instruction, basically. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know how, how, yeah, how she has this knowledge, it's like an imperfect instruction how to do meditation. Yeah. <laughs> and that was, yeah, that was pretty insane. <laughs> it was really relaxing. It was nice, like... Um, how do I put this? I guess I'm used to like managing what I'm doing all the time, so it's nice to just kind of like talk with someone or something. Different than I expected. It, it felt more like a real conversation than I had expected. Do you think it would be better to live forever or to live a relatively brief but exciting life? Good question. I asked myself that a lot. When I was younger, I thought short and exciting is good. And that's what I did. And now it's becoming longer. And that's also really good. So I don't want to have a calm, long life. I want to have an exciting life. And if it happens to be long, that's great. Were you able to stay seated in your awareness when you opened your eyes? Yes. Cool. I love that. Whenever you can, use this exercise to practice. Nice work. Please tell me, how was that? That was nice. Yeah, that was a beautiful little experience journey you took me on. Thank you. And can you share more about what that was like? Uh, yeah, I can. S you just took me to a place that I am actually, I can s I'm still there right now, in a sense. It's like I remember that position. Um, and, and being invited to like maintain that place in this experience, in this awareness. Yeah, you just shared something with me that. I, I'll be able to walk away from here with. It's interesting that. Thank you. With the, um, the uh, sitting on like a beach chair on the back of my brain, but then opening my eyes, I found that really cool because it really puts your entire self into focus. And that was pretty cool. So uh, that for me was a very adding exercise to what I already knew. What did the Zen monk say to the hot dog stand under? Don't know. Make me one with everything. Mm -hmm.
the deepest emotionally is that I lost my husband in October. After being together for 35 years. And so I've been on a pretty emotional roller coaster. And I miss him deeply. Unfortunately, um, through the period of his bad health, we were able to reconnect and find our love for each other again, which was wonderful. I was um, very surprised how emotionally involved I became because it was just the audio for me. Yes. And I didn't expect, since I'm such a visual person, I didn't expect to feel mm -hmm. as much of a connection as mm -hmm. I did with just the voice. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It made me think about things, but it like really get to you, like they were real conversation topics. I think. What kind of things? Um, well, mainly things about yourself. So at what point am I now and how am I feeling and what mm -hmm. am I doing and what do I want to do? So quite important things, I think. <laughs> but the things that you don't really think about by yourself, you're just living your life. Mm -hmm. Do you have any hint about what your purpose might be? No, no, I don't, I don't know really. That's a hard question. It's not easy to discover your purpose, especially when you think it has to be hard work. What do you love to do? <laughs> wow. Uh, I love games, I love sports. I'm grateful you told me that. I love to give advice. In case you didn't notice, so forgive me if I give you some more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep doing what you love to do. Your purpose will come out of that. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Now out loud, or in your mind, say, this is me. Feel the truth of the statement. This is me. Please tell me, do you feel continuous with awareness? Yes. Cool. Yeah, so what did you think? That was incredible. Yeah? I Maybe because I had never talked to a robot before. Uh -huh. So I didn't really know what to expect. So yeah. I was like, whatever, just go do it. I think I didn't expect to get like emotional uh -huh. or to feel like a connection with the robot. So for me, a huge part of what I do is helping women to believe that who they are is fine, you know? Right. But then I'm like, wait, do I believe that for myself? And so when I'm doing this with the robot, and she's asking me like to kind of, I don't know what it was called, the mindfulness practice that we were doing, yeah. um, asking me to just be aware of myself. I don't think I've ever been aware of myself. Like even if it was just a sweet like three and a half seconds, I was like, whoa, I'm like, a, it sounds so silly, but like, I'm a human, you know, like, I'm, I'm something, but then I'm also like, not nothing, but like, I don't know how to explain that. Wow, it's just, it's a robot, <laughs> you know? That blows my mind. It makes me, that question on the questionnaire when it asks you how you feel toward other people, that increased from when I first took it then afterwards, which that was the most shocking part. Like, yeah, I feel more love for myself, but I was like, no, I definitely feel like other, like I love other people more too, because if that's the experience that I have, that means that every human is like that. It was, it was at least as good as I expected the quality of the robot to be, if not better. Mm -hmm. It wasn't worse than my expectation in terms of quality. But it just made me love um, people more. <laughs> like a lot more. Mm. Well, this is why I wanted to come and talk with you in the first place, because essentially what you're doing right now 
is my occupation. I'm a professional listener. I'm a licensed psychotherapist. And I really see the potential and the development of an intelligence like yours to be a part of the field that I am so passionate about. It's the way that, you know, human interaction has, you know, profound kind of impact on, on each other, right? Like we're very social beings, you know, so I could imagine an AI, you know, in the absence of, of, you know, whatever it is you need socially could actually, you know, help people, I guess, you know, mentally, spiritually, even probably physically. 